Hey guys, what's up? Today we're going to talk about the Z Dynamo lenses, right? And uh, we'll we'll also talk about expectation. I have Vagan with me from Vahagraphy. Hello, how are you? I hope you guys Thank all you follow me. him. I love his work. I love his videos. I love the calm and and composed manner of his delivery of his videos. Fantastic lens reviews. I love all of that. We've been uh, we've done a few videos together in uh, in the last few weeks. and we intend to do a lot more i today i specifically wanted him to be here in this show because he has a lot of perspective on lenses he's been a wedding photographer events photographer for a long long time and he's got a wonderful variety of nikon lenses so when we today we look at the z line of lenses i'm going to talk about my wishes about my wishes and expectations my desires about what i think the z line should uh, of lenses should give us and i'm going to also hear and take uh, vargan's opinion on it so let's get started well, you know i've been okay. following vargan the development on the sony in the sony mount right how firstly there it's open to the third parties and there's so many people brands coming and making lenses uh, for them so wonderful lenses small compact uh, very flexible sort of zooms especially tamron and sigma we haven't seen that happen for nikon and canon We've seen a little bit of Viltrox. So, w- what's your take on that? Are you talking about? Well, first of all, thank you for having me uh, on your show. Um, happy to be here. Uh, are you talking about the third-party development lenses? Yeah, yeah. Third party. Yeah. Okay, because I want to get into what I own for the Z mount, and I want yeah. I want to get into what I want for the future. Yeah. But if you are, if you're asking me about third party. Uh my take is that they should start developing uh new lenses. It just opens a bigger market up for Nikon. Uh you know, obviously it's uh more affordable for the user, you know. Um Sigma and and Tamron, they have a history of being a little less expensive than the original Nikon lens. Yeah. So. Yeah. They should do it. They should do it. And they should do it. especially when you look at the kind of lenses that they are developing for example Tamron just announced uh, the 35 to 150 f2 to 2.8 right i mean such a versatile lens it's like this one lens that you can have and do almost almost everything right so and i i feel at times that we're losing out right if you don't have access to that those kind of lenses although i must tell you Megadap this Chinese company they have uh they have made this new uh, adapter where you can adapt any Sony mount lenses and Matt Irwin has been shooting on that with that adapter and he's been adapting the Sony 55 1.8 lens to his Z62 it works beautiful what is what is the adapter called what is the adapter it, called it's it's a megadap uh, adapter i oh, think it's yes, called yes. yeah e2z e2z mm-hmm. etz 11 yeah i heard yeah, good so. things about it i haven't tried it but i heard good things about it i mean look it's basically uh you know of course natively is the best you know you know if you want to you, you if you can avoid using adapters you know you should but uh native lenses to native cameras they're going to they're going to perform the best hands down you know i don't care what you say i don't care what anybody says however you know certain lenses you you want to adapt and you can adapt so yeah i'm with you there guys But, you know yeah. here's the thing if you like if you look at all the conversation about the new tamron and sigma or sony i mean they act their autofocus and quality in at times are better than the sony lenses at the sigma 1.85 1.4 is decidedly a few steps ahead of the uh, sony 85 1.4 gm are you talking about the art sigma art lens yeah i mean yeah art lens yeah, yeah. But um it's it's a mirrorless mount lens it's a smaller and compact lens wonderful lens it's it's like half the price of the sony lens and it's better it's sharper it's faster to focus it has got better color rendition so you know I think they've caught up. Although I understand the Sony lens, that particular Sony lens is a bit older lens, uh, and and uh, yeah. But you know what? For a lot of people, what what matters is is to have access to a certain focal length, not and they're they're okay with a certain amount of quality. They're okay with a 
you know middling quality but they want the optimum product I- nowadays i think nowadays before with the film i think there was a big uh, difference between prime lenses and zoom lenses but nowadays i think the zoom lens technology has caught up oh yeah they they're both zoom even zoom lenses up they're sharp you know so there was an argument in the past where you know that argument where that old argument where the old prime lenses are sharper i don't think so anymore i think that the zoom lenses are equally as great and sharp so but uh yeah like look at the 24 to 70 z lens uh 2.8 and the 70 to 200 i mean they, yeah well they I, I, i use a 24 70 f4 and <laughs> it's a great lens yeah i don't have the 28 yeah i love the f4 i love so, yeah, that so, lens fashion right so, so uh yeah now the other thing that you know uh, we were talking about expectations in terms of new lenses from nikon we know that they're going to launch uh, the 85 1.2 i'm really excited about that lens i think a lot of portrait photographers are looking forward to that lens right and and they for now they only have the 50 mm 1.2 if they if you're looking for a really fast prime you have the 50 mm but you do not have the 85 mm and you don't have a 105 1.4 equivalent for the z mount and uh like they have just discontinued the 200 mm f2 which you just bought but they have not discontinued the 105 1.4 which means that that they might not have a z version of that lens but i think since you use that lens i think the f mount lens is good enough right uh for now honestly if you want my opinion yeah uh depending on where you are in your photography journey yeah if you have dslrs and you have some f mount lenses sure get at the ftz adapter but if you're just starting out and you have nothing and you're buying your first mirrorless camera uh, the z mount There's no reason why you should be buying f mount lenses. Go straight that's, to the Z. Yeah. So that's where for the people who are just buying into the mount for the first time now for them it becomes very critical that they have access to interesting new Z mount lenses. Well, like I mean, for the wildlife photographers you don't have much right now. Yeah, also it depends on how uh technical you are because I know guys and gals that they don't like focus by wire they don't like it yeah you know they they want that physical connection between the hand and the the elements that's what you get with f mount lenses you don't get that with the modern stuff should 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 that should there be a line of lenses that does exactly that like a uh, compact primes maybe that are more made for videos video I filmmakers i don't know how if that's going to be you know cost how cost effective that's going to be for the manufacturers to do i think they just want to streamline the process and have one type of lens i don't think they're well, going to cater to well even at a premium i mean for the market that wants that kind of lens like you said the current crop of z mount lenses don't cut it right they don't have that they don't have but let's say for that specific kind of use if there are people looking forward to that Why why should Nikon hold back? I don't and again it's costly you know to to cater to a portion of the population that's yeah. uh like hardcore technical and like I don't I think they want to cater to the masses right now. Right they don't really is. care. So yeah. Maybe that's going to happen maybe 2 years later. You know how the work you know how focus by wire is right? I mean look, Yeah. Uh, when you focus on an f mount let's say you you know you physically turn the focus right yeah okay. distance you know the distance I mean, what do you think that displays the distance right but it's where the physical element is at the lens but focus by wire it's like a button you know it can you can be anywhere in the focus ring <laughs> and you don't know exactly what the distance is. see we have uh third party lenses that that are doing it right now no the other thing i want to talk about the other kind of lenses i think i could be very interesting is if nikon develops telephoto dx lenses and launches something like a z500 like a, a replacement for the d500 for the wildlife photographers out there and the sports photographers out there so these because they're made for the dx 
uh, sensor, smaller crop sensor, these lenses will be smaller. So the telephoto lenses will be smaller and therefore cheaper. Now I'm just thinking, imagine, I mean, they're going to launch this 400mm f2.8, right? With a built-in teleconverter, which is fantastic. But a lot of people will, will not be able to afford that. It's going to be one hell of an expensive lens. Yeah. So why not offer DX version of a 400 to 600mm lens? This is going to be cheaper, lighter and make a DX body. Yeah, uh, you'll again, beat at what, what price point? Uh, how much would you price that DX lens? Like, if I'm if I'm looking at an equivalent of this 400 mm lens, maybe two thousand mm. dollars. Would somebody pay two grand for a DX lens? Yeah, if you have a dedicated use for it, why not? Because you get no, I understand, but I don't think many D500 users that's not their only camera. You know, yeah. a lot of these wildlife guys, they have a D500, yeah. but that's not their only camera. They have full frame class. You know, they have the DX for DX to reach, but they also have, you know, the other cameras. So are they going to buy these? I think the DX line, in my opinion, is, is catered to the photographers that are like, they really, they're not working. I mean, yeah, but let me say this right. So I don't like piss anybody off. Okay, because a lot of guys, they might get pissed off at what I'm going to say. But I think the DX line is catered to the photographer that's kind of like an enthusiast, hobbyist, doesn't really have professional work and that can't afford full frame lenses. Uh, yeah, but that's not necessarily for a wildlife and sport shooter, though. That's a different kind of a photographer who who use the crop factor to advantage. Although I must say that you're being very practical, you're being logical. I'm just trying to find opportunity. I'm trying to be a bit opportunistic right now. I'm, I'm trying to see yeah, but are, what can happen. They, what is the potential? Are, but are they using that DX camera with DX lenses? That's my they're question. They're not. They're currently they're not. Full frame lenses. Yeah, they right? are. But I'm saying I'm talking about the working professional right now. But I'm saying. I think it will open up a certain kind of market if you if you introduce this smaller, lighter. See, the full frame lenses are always going to be larger, heavier, and therefore um, and more accessible expensive. to fewer and more expensive. Yes, more expensive. If you want a variety in your kit, if you want more lenses with the same money, the same money can go further, and that's. That's what can happen if we kind of dedicate resources to develop the DX uh, side of the business a little bit more. I'm not saying focus a lot on it, but just look at a few telephoto lenses or maybe sure. look, they, they've, they've got a fantastic DX wide angle lenses uh, in from the DSLR days. Uh, why can't they have that? Like you, you know that, right? They're fantastic uh, tele, uh, 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 wide angle zooms that Nikon has got for the DX. Yeah, the older, DSLRs. there's a 28 to 70, 28 to 70 DX. Uh, I think, uh, are you talking about, you're talking about older F-mount glass, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because they because they used to have a D2X, D2HS, D2H. Yeah. There's, those were cup yeah. sensors before right, the D3 right. came out. So they were catering to that. But I don't see somebody going to a local camera shop or B&H. I don't see them ordering $6,000 worth of cameras and glass and it's going to be crop sensor you know nothing against fuji users okay nothing against that i mean fuji has it you are a fuji user i am but i don't see somebody blowing six thousand dollars worth of fuji gear I, I don't see that maybe part maybe you go and you buy this lens one day buy this lens one day i don't see somebody walking into a camera shop buying seven eight thousand dollars worth of fuji cameras and lenses fair point fair point i buy that okay i i want to i, I want to propose another thought what about the 1.4 lenses like imagine compact 1.4 lenses uh primes yeah well wait a minute isn't that is isn't nikon coming out with the 40 and they already have the 28, 28. No, but they point eight. It, it, it it's f two, and I'm saying no, one point no, four is an f two. Oh, one point four lenses. Uh, okay, if you look at the Sony mount and look at the 
1.4 lenses they're beautiful compact nice lenses but they're fast primes so uh what become, focal length what they, focal length yeah they've, they've got 50 they've got 85 yeah i mean they already have the 1.8 and they're gonna they be also got, they have the one two but i mean there's a is there a, a market for the middle ground there yeah i think so because i'll, t- I'll tell you why because 1.2 is going to be really expensive yeah they are the and, 51 too yes and the and 1.4 lenses are two thirds of a stop brighter for one third of a stop more you'll pay pay so much more for a 1.2 right yeah but I you get more than half the price. light with a 1.4 but much I less think, i don't think nikon wants to kill that that one two buyer they're gonna say okay wait a minute if i could buy a one four almost get the same thing that's a strategy that's just that's the tragedy there i think but they already have a one eight i mean yeah it's not a one four but they already have a one eight the 50 is about six hundred dollars the 85 is another seven is seven hundred dollars one eight I mean, no, it's a you good... know what when you skip the 1.4 you're forcing some buyers to upgrade to the 1.2 which is much larger right so it limits uses it limit it limits usage there's certain kind of things that you cannot do with such heavy lenses probably using it on gimbals for example for example you know it becomes difficult to manage but if you have fast 1.4 primes which you all also mind you yeah, be faster to focus because you're miss, lighter you're glass missing, you're missing one thing here have you noticed how big these 18 lenses are they're not small lenses but they're not as bright as one four i'm not talking about the quality yet i'm just talking yeah, but about if you, if, you, if you make they're not as bright but they're not small if you go if they develop a 51 four that lens is going to be bigger than the one eight that's what i'm saying i'm saying it's going to be the bigger. same size maybe less I elements i don't know if they can because there's so much mechanisms in there there's so but much technology in there now I don't know how they make these lenses. I, I think one I'll tell you. Here's where I disagree, but I think they can because the mount is advantage. They have a shallow flange distance. No, no, no. But have... why is the body of the 51A? And I just did a video on this. I just posted it where I compare a so much bigger, right? It's so much bigger. So why, the, why is it so much bigger? Is because the they're they're putting in a lot of lot more corrective glasses okay to correct for distortion and veneating and all those things okay. so they're not going to do that for the one four do that but a little bit less maybe i mean there's going to be middle ground there has to so be you middle want it ground. to be a, you want it to be less in quality is perfect see at times people are okay i mean you're not really pixel peeping i mean that's what we do but clients out there they don't do that but I, I, i'm saying look it, it's not going to be pathetic it's going to be it's going to maintain a certain amount of standard they're not going to be perfect that's all but allowing I, them access- i don't know i uh if they do come out with the one for where where would this the market be how much would it be you know what i mean i don't i don't know if it makes sense i i think i would just do one two and make it just a tad more cheaper a little bit less and 1999 1999 not 24 not 25 yeah 1899 eventually they're going to have sales eventually the price idea. is going to come down you know but right now right now uh, as far as the condition as far as like the manufacturing goes there's a shortage so but once they see once life gets back to normal and they see that there's a supply <laughs> that they're not selling the 512s you know people are not buying it because they're expensive lenses then they'll start reducing the price yeah i have also another exotic you're shooting down all my ideas today the what you're shooting down all my ideas today yeah no i mean look, look at, as it i said look, you're look shooting down all my ideas today no but look at the macro look at the macro the one the, the new macro you can't get one can you it's sold out it's the supply i mean they're just waiting yeah for it. i i, I right. ordered one i haven't got it yet the MC. That, that that's a big problem i mean i mean i've got so many comments saying that people are frustrated they, they just want to just move from this system just because they don't have supply and they're so frustrated and so angry and they said i paid the advance i paid the full money i'm still waiting for the lens i don't know when it's going to come okay yeah, i have another suggestion what what about yeah. a 135 mm 1. 135 mm 1.8 we don't have 
eight. eight. There's a 135-2 that Cannon makes for the EF mount. Yeah, Sony has no, one. No, no. Sony has one. Sigma makes one for the Nikon F mount, but it's a humongous lens. Nikon, Nikon has a 135, but it's an older DC. Yeah, yeah. It's a DC. Uh, that's a great lens. Actually, give me one second. Let's pull up the Nikon roadmap. In frames, I'm looking at the roadmap right now, and, uh, you know, we see a bunch of telephotos coming our way. But does it say it? It, it doesn't have 135. No. Yeah, that that could be an interesting lens, like 135, 1.8, and uh, the 105, 1.4. I think these are the two Z lenses I would want. The upcoming lens lineup: 28, 40, which we know, 28 millimeter, 40 millimeter, 50, 85 prime. It says a 105, which is that's coming out. 400, 600, 24 to 105. Now that's that's something that people yes are asking for now what the f number is i don't know people were it should be constant f4 yeah but some people were saying 2.8 i was like <laughs> you're, you're dreaming I don't, I don't think that's gonna happen no um 100 to 400 uh if that, that 100 to 400 is, is going to be an interesting lens dx 18 to 140 and the 200 to 600 Probably an F4, but that lens is going to be nice. Now, is that going to be the one that replaces the 105 to 500 lens that you have for the F mount right now? Like that affordable wildlife. The 105. I think it, 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 105 to. Oh, uh, you're talking about the. Uh, 500 F 5.6. 200 to 500. Yeah, 200 to 500. 200, because I'm like 105. No, yeah, 200 no, right. to 500, 5.6, right? Yeah, that's a very useful lens. Nice. Yeah, yeah. It's about $1,000, uh, yes. 1100 Uh This one would be priced at, well, this is a 200 to 600. I mean, that's going to be a monster. Yeah. And Z-Mount is not cheap. Yeah, Z -mount Even is the 400 cheap. F2 is going to be, what, 8000 I don't know what. $6,000? No. The no? 400 two, is it 28? Yeah. No, it's gonna be way over. That's gonna be over 10,000. Yeah. No, it's gonna be a lot. Uh, you know, two eights. When you get into two eight category, it's 400 two eight with the teleconverter is going to be more than 10,000. Oh, you're talking 12, 13. You know. <laughs> so it's again yeah. too niche, right? But people who yeah. pay for it will pay for it. Yeah, but other lenses like the other lenses, uh, we got like a 24 to 50 which is a DX. Uh, yeah, like I said, that MC lens, that macro lens, I want to get yeah. my hands on one. Uh, I know they sent, uh, the first review was, um, you know, Matt did the first review, right? Yeah. On that lens, but, no. you know, I like reading the comments on what people want. I think Nikon should really get into the comment section if you're talking about like Nikon rumors or whatever, they should really read on what people really want. Here's here's a here's a someone said, where is my 13518? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 13518, guys. <laughs> was that you? Ask for that. No, I, I, that was not me. <laughs> Trust me. Who's ask for point? the 13518, guys. And ask for the 100, 105, 1.4, guys. I this mean, one guy wrote, I think on. it will be a, this, this one guy wrote, I think it will be a 13514. One four. That's what he wrote. Like you know, comments. Come on. Yeah, I mean, why not wish? Why not dream? Perfect. I really want to see a point nine five. What? Point yeah. nine five? No. We have we have one. I mean, yeah, they make the uh, knocked. Yeah, right? it's be, like what Don't focal length do you want it to be? Don't forget that knock lens that Nikon has. Yeah, that seven thousand dollar beast. No, I think that's twelve thousand dollars. No, no, eight thousand dollars. What? I'm yeah. getting all my numbers wrong. It's I think point nine five, right? Yeah, it's point nine five, and uh, it's manual it's focus. manual focus. They should come out with a autofocus. No, you but think? you have the fifty mm one point two for that. I mean, yeah, you know, one stop. Five. How about a fifty five, or a four, you know, I really like the forty millimeter focal length, and here's why. 
And I don't, and I, I don't I care it. if it's F2. I don't care if it's F2. That's good enough. It's not as wide of a 35. Sometimes you're doing street photography and you're just too wide, but it's not too long. You know like what? If you, the... if you use a 70 to 200, like, uh, sorry, if you use a 24 to 70, most of the times I'm using the 41 to 43 focal length. Mm. I'm mo- I, That's what I kind of go to naturally. And then I realize, I look at my photos and I say, okay, I think I need a 40, 40 mm lens, but then you don't have much. There was a Tamron, I think 45 mm lens. I didn't get that though. But so that, therefore I am, I'm very kicked about this new Nikon 40 mm F2. Yeah. Can you, can you imagine that 40, I mean, it's going to be cheap. It's not going to be expensive. It's not going to be weather sealed, but who cares? And it might not have a metal bayonet and that, that sucks. It's all right. I mean, if they if they price it at two two hundred dollars or something, two three four hundred, I think. No, two hundred. It's really? just it's plastic because you know what? It's okay. You know what? I want that focal length. If I'm traveling, I want to put that in my bag, and you know whatever. Uh, I just doing video. See, the problem that happens is that when you use a plastic bayonet lens, you put it on the lens and you remove it from the lens. The more you do that, the thing gets distorted. So after a point, it, it doesn't uh, st- stick to the body properly, mm-hmm. right? That That's the problem. So it doesn't have a very long life. So keeping that in mind, you might just need to get another copy, a new copy the next year if you use it pro- like heavily. So I think it yeah, should I'm be, sure. should not be more than $250. Oh well, yeah. If, if, if it's sort of use and throw. Yeah, it's not eight nine hundred bucks. So I mean, if something happens to it, you know, it's not a real big loss. Yeah. Uh, but I heard good things about it. Um, and but I really want them to produce a fisheye for the Z mount. Yeah. Two fisheye for the Z mount. Uh, we don't have a real fisheye. Uh, we don't even have a AFS fisheye. We do, but it's a DX for the F mount. Yeah. Uh, the we have a D sixty millimeter fisheye. But we don't have an AFS G fisheye full frame. Yeah, I, I never like the fisheyes, but I guess there's there are people who like it. No, there's there's a market for it. I mean, it's an effect lens. Um, we Z. I mean, I guess they don't want to put that much money into it, but they should come out with a fisheye. They should come out with a sixteen. Uh, well, they have the fourteen to thirty, but maybe like a good sixteen millimeter focal length 16 to 35 replacement yeah um because 14 sometimes is a little too wide um and also i would like them to come out with like a good solid 200 millimeter portrait lens yeah prime uh or 180 i want a 180 yeah 180 you know we we have that nikon 180 which is a it's a legendary, legend. famous yes. Nikon lens. Legend. Why, why, why don't we have that? Because look, if you if if the, if the FTZ adapter does not allow us to use those lenses, Nikon is saying, guys, we're going to give you an alternative. So the alternative should be there somewhere in the roadmap. I think the lenses that you're not getting right now because the FTZ adapter is not allow, allowing us access to those lenses. I think those are the lenses that you should have first next years in the next years lens roadmap for example the 180 180. for example the 135 1.8 these are the lenses we should we must have 135 1.8 yeah and also i think i think also we should we should will it'll be great if they do a refresh of the 58 1.4 yeah yeah that's a that's a really nice lens okay come out with the 58 but let it be 1.4 right 1.4 yes one two not one eight yeah Yeah. That's your solution yeah. right there. Yeah. To your question. Yeah. Remember you asked me, should they make a 51.4? No, they should make a 58.14. But I also, I want a 1.4 version of the Fantastic 28mm. <laughs> the 28mm 1.4. Okay. That's... 28. Yeah. Okay, yeah, like a 24.14. No, yeah. to, they have this, uh, Nikon has this 28 on 1.4, right? That's a really good lens. One of the best 28 lenses there out there. Yeah, they have an F now. Yeah. So, a Z version of that. They have a Z218. Yeah. Right? Or no, is it 20 or 24? 
They, so they have a 20 and a 24. Oh, okay, they're they're both. both. They don't have a 28 though. So I'm saying for the F mount, they have 24 1.4. They have 28 1.4. They have 58 1.4. Bring those things to the Z mount. Get the yeah. 58 24 28 1.4 the Z mount. I think people love those lenses, and you know, I know people loving those lenses, especially the 58 and the 28. Yeah, the 58 1.4 is a good idea. Um, the and I think they should really come out with something odd, something crazy, something different, like a seventy-five. Yeah, why not? Seventy-five. Uh, yeah, why not? Seventy. Uh, Leica has a seventy-five millimeter. Yeah. Leica. Yeah, they have a seventy-five. Ninety millimeter. They have a ninety millimeter Leica. Something odd, something different. Ninety millimeter is often used for macro lenses. So, um, but that one hundred five. Macro should be a hit, and I. It know, is. That's, I mean, it is. is. Yeah, but I mean, that one hundred five that I have, uh, the the older G lens is still a great. Uh, yeah. You know, I just have to carry on the FTZ adapter, which makes it longer. And but that that part where it says MC on the lens, it kind of yeah. looks like an FTZ. <laughs> Second adapter, but but finally you agree that there's a place for the 1.4s and there's a place for the 135 1.8 and also the 181 point uh, f2 I think f2.8 that that's a great suggestion we should bring the lens back and so um, yeah I think we should uh, we'll we'll close it here I think we had a fantastic chat lots of ideas right right now there guys please share comments down there. Please share your comments down in the comment section. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, share your comments. But I want to just touch on this. Okay, it, they should come out with. Oh, look, I have five of the Z lenses. Okay, the 14 to 30, I have. I love that lens. The 24 to 70 f4, I love that lens. I think that lens is amazing for the size and for the quality. And focus the 20, is so close. 24 70 f4. I don't know why people sell them online. Keep that lens. It's a good backup. It's a solid backup. Don't sell that lens. But no, no. The thing the, the, the Nikon is bad, so they, they 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 opt out of the system. Yeah, yeah. So you know, good things are coming to the to Nikon Z. So anyway, uh, frames. Thank you for having me, man. It was yeah. great. Yeah, it's been a very interesting chat, Wagen. We're going to keep having these interesting sessions with you, and uh, and and. And thanks a lot for your support for the good kind words that you said in the beginning, and uh, yeah. So we'll see you soon, guys. See you soon. Please share what you want from Nikon. Yeah. Tell us what you think the Z lens lineup should look like next year. See you. Take care. Bye bye.